I've been wanting to make this video for a while. So long, in fact, that I planned this video prior to going to MCM back in October, where I got to meet Tomska and ask him, hey, is Ben purposely autistic coded or like, was that an accident? In which he basically confirmed that yes, Ben is purposely autistic. And then he proceeded to violently attack my brother. <laughs> you, Tomska. Now I have to think of a new video title idea and can't use the accidental autistic coding of Ben Dexter. Thanks a lot! If you don't know, April is Autism Acceptance Month, and I'm autistic. So you have to accept me being annoying about my special interest for the entire month, baby! You may be wondering, well, what is your special interest? No, no one is wondering that. It's it's so obvious. It's Crash Zoom. We, we, we know it's Crash Zoom. I know it's Crash Zoom. You know it's Crash Zoom. We all know it. I don't know how, but Tomska somehow made crack cocaine for my autistic brain specifically, and he will have to pay for that one day. Enough rambling. Let's get on to the video. We're gonna take this twink, this gay twink, and we're gonna dissect him and we're gonna diagnose him with autism. You may think, you aren't a specialist. You don't have a doctorate. I have a doctorate in sex. <laughs> No, no, you're right, I don't have a doctorate, but I have something that is basically the same. A special interest in autism. Hug yeah, I am so annoying. So what I'm doing is going through the autism diagnosis criteria. I'm gonna go through every trait and I'll talk about instances in the show where Ben shows said trait. Now disclaimer, I know most people who are going to watch this aren't gonna do this, but to the one kid who's gonna watch this and go, huh, I think I might be autistic. Please don't diagnose from this video. I'm gonna leave a link to the diagnosis criteria that was used on me when I was 17 and getting diagnosed, along with a few other sources that I used for this video in the video description. If you want to research into it, that is completely fine, but don't just watch this video and go, yeah, I'm autistic. Now, without further ado, let's diagnose this bitch. Someone with autism must show persistent defects in social communication and social interaction across multiple contexts. In the diagnosis criteria, this is divided into three sections. Number one, defects in social-emotional reciprocity, ranging, for example, from abnormal social approach and failure of normal back-and-forth conversation to reduced sharing of interest, emotion, or effect to a failure to initiate or respond to social interactions. In Movie Massacre, Ben has this conversation with Lucy. Ben, can we do this later? Hmm. Okay, for this scene, what I want you to do is take this prop gun and shoot this prop old lady. Ben here doesn't respond correctly to what Lucy has said, showing a failure slash abnormal response to back and forth conversation. We also see something similar to this in Shellshock, where Ben asks, Lucy, should I bring the shotgun microphone or the microphone shotgun? Lucy doesn't respond to him, talking to herself. However, instead of Ben acknowledging this, he continues on the conversation. You could argue that this is Ben attempting a back and forth conversation here, but it wouldn't be deemed socially correct. Ben is technically going through the motions, but these motions are not correct in the social situation. And finally, while definitely a stretch, in Firing Squad, instead of just telling Lucy that he was fired, Ben writes an entire script to basically avoid this conversation and continues to avoid Lucy's question when she further asks about it, showing an abnormal social approach where he uses his special interest, something that will come up a lot, as almost an easier way to communicate than actually having a normal conversation. However, this is more of a personal interpretation of the scene rather than a clear explanation of said scene. Literal thinking is also under this section, something that Ben is shown having. For example, in the episode Firing Squad, Ben proclaims he's going to become a male escort, and when asked if he knows what that means, he says he thinks he's a type of postman. In this situation, he's taking the word escort literally, meaning to accompany someone or something somewhere, and as such is assuming the word is male, as in post, and not male, as in the sex. We also see this right at the start of the episode where Ben makes a joke about cats only having nine lives. Well, this isn't necessarily Ben being literal in this situation as it's a scripted video, I personally like to read it as somebody suggested the joke to Ben and he didn't originally understand it until it was explained and then implemented that into his script, or he knew that some people also struggle with literal thinking and decided to accommodate to that by putting it in his film. Or a secret third option, where he thinks explaining the joke is the funniest thing ever, and this is definitely not projection. In Shellshock, when Linda says, Time to kiss your butts goodbye. Ben is shown to once again take this literally and shout, Oh no! She's gonna kiss our butts! And finally, you could argue that we also see this literal thinking at play in Sky Scam, where Lucy says, Ben, <laughs> relax. Don't be such a scaredy cat. I don't get it. 
defects in nonverbal communicative behaviours used for social interaction, ranging, for example, from poorly integrated verbal and nonverbal communication to abnormalities in eye contact and body language or defects in understanding and use of gestures to a total lack of facial expressions and nonverbal communication. This is one of the lesser seen traits of Ben's autism mainly seen in the episode Firing Squad. Ben consistently throughout the episode is shown not really understanding how what he is doing is affecting Lucy, even when her tone of voice, facial expression or body language tells us, the audience, how she feels. This can be due to Ben having defects in understanding verbal and nonverbal social cues. He only really understands the weight of the situation when Lucy is more direct with how upset and angry she is. And while this hasn't shown up in an episode yet, and has a chance that it might not show up, when I got to meet Tomska, he mentioned that in the upcoming episode, Ben at some point will use a facial expression chart to figure out what Lucy is feeling. If this joke gets scrapped, I'm gonna look like a liar. Free. Defects in developing, maintaining, and understanding relationships, ranging, for example, from difficulties adjusting behaviour to suit various social contexts, to difficulties in sharing imaginative play or making friends, to absence of interest in peers. Again, we don't see much of this in Crash Zoom, mainly due to the characters not getting to interact a whole lot with other characters. However, Ben isn't shown having friendships outside of Lucy and Kate, one of which is his little sister. Autistic people having a small friendship group is a very common thing due to our autistic traits. Even in Ben and Lucy's friendship, a lot of the conflicts that arise are linked to Ben's autistic traits. This section of the diagnosis criteria, which mainly focuses on social interaction, was a lot harder to find traits for. While Ben definitely does show traits of all of these, it took a lot longer and does require you to read into things more. Not to mention the show being a comedy just does make certain interactions between people seem less abnormal and less awkward. And because Lucy is the main straight man of the series, it doesn't give much room for other characters to react to Ben's autistic traits in a weird way, as it would take away from Lucy's role. The next section of the diagnosis criteria focuses on four types of restrictive and repetitive behaviours, of which Ben shows a lot more of. 1. Stereotyped or repetitive motor movements, use of objects or speech. For example, simple motor stereotypes, lining up toys or flipping objects, echolalia, or idiosyncratic phrases. In Grave Mistake, at 2 minutes and 7 seconds, Ben is shown stimming. What is stimming? Stimming is the repetition of physical movements, sounds, words, moving objects, or other repetitive behaviours. While stimming is not limited to just autistic people, anyone can do it, and most people have at least once in their life stimmed, whether clicking a pen over and over or bouncing your leg up and down. Autistic people often do it to either being understimulated or overstimulated. What Ben does here is super similar to hand flapping, a stim I personally do when I get excited and have done while making this video. We also see what could possibly be an idiosyncratic phrase. For example, in Skyscan, when Ben says, You know what else is natural? Death! Like our inevitable death inside this giant robot butt! Oh my god, the wings aren't even flapping! In reference to the plane, an idiosyncratic phrase is something that, while maybe a strange way of describing something, technically makes sense. An example that I found from the ADOS 2 Coding Guidance Stereotype slash Idiosyncratic Use of Words and Phrases, A4, when searching up what an idiosyncratic phrase is, is someone describing milk as cereal water or a feather as a bird leaf. Ben is also shown using stereotype speech in the episode Firing Squad, where he twice responds to somebody saying, You can't fire us! We quit! If you are unaware of what stereotype speech is, it is described again in stereotype slash idiosyncratic use of words or phrases as language which sounds as though it has been borrowed from somewhere else. For example, from a teacher, a parent, or more likely for Ben, television and film, and even radio. Sometimes this can be very obvious. Phrases such as over crying out loud, let's get back to work, let's get a bit of fresh air in here, I'm in my element with this spanner, it's a piece of cake, and you're full of surprises, aren't you? 2. Insistence on sameness, inflexible adherence to routines or ritualized patterns of verbal or nonverbal behaviour, examples being extreme distress at small changes, difficulties with transitions, rigid thinking patterns, greeting rituals, need to take the same route or eat the same food every day. I'm gonna go off script here for a second. I don't really think Ben clearly shows this trait. There is definitely things that you could speculate on, like I personally think that um, he likes filmmaking because, you know, it's set, you write a script, you follow the script, and usually, like, things go in a very set order. And he does, in the show, show anger when things don't go to plan. But to me, it's not intense enough where I feel that that's a purposeful, like, 
it's been purposely implemented to be like, oh yeah, that's him getting upset at uh, things going wrong. It's more of just a comedic thing. You can still read it as an autistic thing as well, but I don't think that was purposeful at all. Um, and I do also like to think that Ben dresses the way he does all the time because of his autism. And I know it's cartoon logic for all of them to wear the same clothes, but Ben specifically in Cover Up also doesn't wear, he doesn't have his own winter clothes. And he, he is shown obviously wearing winter clothes, that's the whole point of the episode, but they don't, none of them look like his. Like Lucy and Kate, they have very specific colours that are assigned to their clothes, while Ben just has a random jacket on. The, but that's about it, really. Again, there isn't much for this section that... There isn't really much in the show that shows these traits, and you have to rely a lot more on speculation. I'm not going off script again. This is the worst thing ever, and I um, suck at putting words together. <laughs> Three. Highly restricted, fixated interests that are abnormal in intensity or in focus. For example, strong attachments to or preoccupied. For example, strong attachment or preoccupation with unusual objects, or... I can't read the rest of this. These words are too goddamn big for me. <laughs> it's the special interest section, that's what we'll say. There is a lot for this one. This is the most commonly shown trait of Ben's in the show. Ben has two special interests throughout the show, guns and filmmaking. We see this countless times, and apart from Sky Scam and Cover Up, his interests are in some way mentioned in every episode so far. His first appearance in the show is him mentioning his special interest. Because Ben's interests are mentioned in every episode, for this part, I'm going to specifically focus on Firing Squad, which to me personally, does a good job at showing what hyperfocus is. If you are unaware of what hyperfocus is, it, in the context of autism at least, is when a special interest is so all-consuming that it can make an autistic person lose focus on anything else and become damaging in certain instances. A real-world example being that I can sometimes get so hyperfocused on something that I can forget to drink and eat. In Firing Squad, Ben's hyperfocus on filmmaking loses the free of them job after job, Ben being too focused on his interest to care until he is outright shouted at. I feel this is a symptom that is often not talked about too much outside of the autistic community, and when it is, it is often demonised and there is very little sympathy and understanding towards autistic people who deal with it. At the end of the episode, Lucy ends up embracing Ben's special interest, and instead of just pressuring him to hide it, finds a healthy way for him to express it. Four. Hyper or hypo reactivity to sensory input or unusual interest in sensory aspects of the environment. For example, apparent indifference to pain and temperature, adverse response to specific sounds or texture, excessive smelling or touching of objects, visual fascination with lights or movement. In Cover Up, Ben shows hypersensitivity to cold temperatures so much in fact that even with layers and layers of clothing, it doesn't help him at all. And throughout the series, Ben is shown multiple times doing what a lot of autistic people dub as raptor arms. While from what I've researched, there isn't a set conclusion as to why autistic people commonly hold their hands up like this, a theory some people have is that it's sensory seeking reasons. I do raptor arms myself, I like to think of them as zombie arms, because I find the position much more comfortable than when I have my arms down at my side. The final part of the criteria mainly talks about if the symptoms have persisted since childhood, which is something we can't currently confirm and might never be able to confirm, if symptoms cause a significant amount of disturbance, which considering they are often the conflict of the episode, I would say so, and finally if other disabilities could better explain these symptoms, which we know is probably not the case. At most, some of these symptoms could also indicate ADHD as well, but I would argue that Ben simply has both rather than one, as you're more likely to actually have both than just one. I'm sure there is probably more things that I've forgotten, and there is absolutely things that I've missed out as I personally felt they steered too much into headcanons and speculation for me to feel comfortable putting them in this video. Ben, to me, is a good example of representation. In a genre where it could so easily turn to mockery, Ben's autism never feels as if it's the butt of the joke. While there are jokes that center Ben's autistic traits, they don't ever feel mean-spirited, at least to me. And on a more personal note, I really relate to Ben's character. I got into Crash Zoom around a pretty shitty time in my life. I was still coming to terms with the fact that I was autistic. Crash Zoom as a whole has been really important to me, and, I mean, it's my special interest, and... There's a whole theory on how special interests developed because autistic people have a lower dopamine levels. I'm not getting into it. 
But Ben specifically, seeing a character who is positive autistic representation helped me accept myself. I'm so passionate about Ben's autism because it isn't just about his character being autistic, it's about how he helped me be proud of myself. Being excited about him being autistic is also being happy in my autistic self. I'm excited for the future of Crash soon, and I'm excited to see how Ben's autism is further shown. Also, Tom's going to edu, make Kate and Lucy autistic as well, or I'll explode! <laughs>